Hi, I'm Shane, and this is my wife, Sarah, and welcome to Lori Farm. Come take a tour with us. We actually started off the year with a gigantic dirt pile out in the middle of this area here uh, due to some pond uh, renovations that were happening. It's nice to see that that's all gone now. We can get our growing area back for pumpkins and watermelon and all sorts of things that we put out here. Uh, a lot of sweet corn and um, all, all kinds of vegetables cucumbers and zucchini. This is the pond on our property. Um, it's just shy of an acre. It actually goes back um, quite a ways back there. I don't know, those uh, wood duck houses back there are pretty much right on the edge of it. Um, it's pretty weedy on the other side and shallow, but I think typically that's kind of season dependent as to how that how weedy that is. So back through here, this is going to be something new for next season that we didn't have this season. Um, Shane went through and mowed all of this down. This was all wild vegetation, but what we're going to do is I'm going to have a medicinal herb garden here next year because it's something that I really like. Um, I like making tinctures and things like that. So now we're going to grow our own instead of buying them. Quite a change. It's a nice thing about Minnesota, you get actual seasons. Yeah, I think the wood duck houses actually did pretty good this year. I think I at least saw one, uh, one group of wood ducks out here. So that's good. It's always nice when the houses do what they're supposed to. Spend a lot of time building them. I think if memory serves me right, I want to say we have maybe 12 around the pond. This area north of the pond has basically just been sitting for many, many years, as far as I can tell. Um, I know that back in the 60s, it was at least ran for hay, and they probably even did a lot more back here. But um, rather than just having it be weeds, we, we decided to mow it down, and um, we came through and we planted actually radishes back here thousands of them and uh, that has worked out really really well this year um, and uh, I think next year what our plan is is hopefully to turn this into more of like a grazing area with maybe some chicken tractors or something like that so it'll be a nice area and it's you know doing something with it instead of not doing something with it. I think it'll be a really nice change too I mean even having it mowed down it looks really beautiful. We've had quite a few projects this year and actually overall I would say that things have gone on have been a pretty good success. You know I mean you're gonna have things that are failures of course but you know some of the things that we've tried and we're gonna get to show you here worked out pretty doggone good so you know try to try a hundred things and hopefully uh, hopefully maybe 50 of them work and that makes you happy. Well, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but we do have several deer stands. Deer hunting is something that I like to do here, archery specifically. So we'll be doing some of that coming up real shortly. Another nice thing Shane did was he went through and mowed trails so we can actually get out and enjoy the property versus just having it. Me and the kids like to run around here and see what we can find. We've found um, elderberry plants. We've found wild raspberries so it's just it's kind of nice just to have the trails and enjoy nature too without having to drive anywhere so yeah this side is the uh the east side of the pond and like i said you can you can see it's pretty well weeded in but if i get up here pretty close you can start to see the water so last year we had a massive drought and uh that's when all these weeds pretty much came to be so I would assume that after a few years of, uh, of having good water in here, most of these will probably go away and it'll be water all the way across there for at least most of the year. So basically the property uh, that we own is 10 acres. Um, about half of it is kind of like this wooded grove area with weeds and trees. And uh, the other half is pretty much garden and barn and house and little bit of yard and that kind of stuff. So kind of have a 50-50 split here. Uh, so this is where our ducks spend most of their day. It's the other nice thing about having a pond on the property is they get free range 
and they seem to like this little cove area in here and it's nice because then we don't got to run around and water them 80,000 times a day. They can just come down and get a drink whenever they want. I always really like this area. It's kind of like a little bit of a clearing in the middle here. Can't tell that it exists when you're over by the house, but basically trees on both sides and kind of a clearing right up the center. Nice little peaceful area. We found so many interesting things out here this year and I know in the years coming I'll probably just continue to increase in the amount of great vegetation that we have on the property. We uh, This year our big surprise or the big find that we came across was we have a quite an abundance of elderberry all over the property and um, Sarah really likes using elderberry for different things and so that that's something that we're going to have a lot of fun with. Probably the biggest amount of elderberry that we have is right here and uh, so that was kind of kind of crazy just keep finding it. It's right. kind of a cool shot right there. That's cute especially with all the fall colors. Right. Well, mainly we started out here because of all the pretty fall colors that are only going to increase over the next couple of weeks. But when we get back up to the to the house and the barn, be able to show you guys that. We have quite a few chickens to show you, so pretty exciting. And I think, uh, how many ducks do we have right now? 19? 19 ducks. 19 ducks. Got some fall projects out here to take care of this tree that fell down. I don't know, it makes good balance beam for the kids. It's true. Nothing like the crunch of uh, fallen leaves to just really bring home the fall feel. This was the uh, first elderberry bush that was found and I can't even take credit for it. We didn't find it, actually my dad found it. So he came out to see us and have a barbecue and I think we wandered back down through the trails and he saw it and said, hey, that's elderberry over there. And Sarah was so excited so that that was kind of the beginning of finding all of them on the property. I like it this time of year better out in here though because it's not as buggy so you can spend more time out here. Yeah, that's true. And it really gets bad. enjoy it and how beautiful it really is. So basically this is just kind of coming out of the trees here. We're going to walk up to our farm stand that we have. This is our stand that we got out by the roadside for Right now it's full of pumpkins after the pumpkin harvest. Pumpkin squash and corn stalks. Yep, pumpkin squash, corn stalks, all kinds of stuff. So we had quite a few people stop and grab some stuff. So on the front of our property, we have a bunch of fruit trees that we've planted over the years. This side is pears, plums, and nectarines. Uh, we did it about two years ago on this side, so I'm really excited to see what the upcoming years will bring as far as fruit. On the other side, we have apples and cherry trees, which we planted about five years ago when we moved in here. And one thing I'm excited about is when they get older, they'll also hopefully block the view of our road because that is the the one um, downside to where we live is the busy road. So this is where Chaos Garden was, if you've watched our other videos. Um, it started out with Shane just running implements to show the diff that he's collected and made over the years that we've been here. And then we threw down a bunch of um, just extra seeds we had that have been, you know, they were one, two years old. So we just threw them all down and it ended up flourishing and growing awesomely so much so that we are going to do that next year also um, we'll probably even make chaos garden a little bit bigger and it'll probably do better because um, this year we got a late start on it because like I said it started out as like a farm video and then we were like well it's all tilled up we might as well use it for something so next year we'll get on it a little bit sooner and I think it'll even be better than it was this year. This is an old corn crib that I built out of pallets actually just for fun. We really don't use it for corn or anything like that. We have a planter box on the front but mainly it just stores all the stuff for the pool in the summertime. And for anyone who's followed my garden videos this is how far my loofah got. So I did produce one it just never came to fruition. So next year I'll have to start them way earlier than I did this year so this is one of those lesson learned things. But hey I had one growing for once so that's something.
So this is greenhouse number two, or um, as we like to call it now, convertible greenhouse. Uh, we ended up, this, these used to be over there and they were connected to make one long greenhouse, but we decided to change things up this year, bring them over here and split them up. We wrapped them and uh, that one held up really great. This one did not, the wind took it out or maybe a cat, I really don't know who to blame on this one. Uh, it worked great when it was wrapped. Um, and then late in the season, like I said, something happened to it and it came down. But we did have a ton of squash that grew in there, uh, peppers, and they did really well. So we'll be rewrapping this next year probably and reusing it. This is greenhouse number one. Um, this is where we had our beans planted and beets and then our fall crop, which was lettuce and Swiss chard. I did transplant some strawberries in here because I think next year what I'm going to do is make this strawberries, but we'll see. Um, but eventually, yeah, I think I would like this all strawberries and it's protected from the chickens and then hopefully we don't have to lock the chickens up nearly as long as we did this year, unfortunately. But this one held up really great to weather and it produced really well for us. We do have a lot more space in here that I think we can optimize a little bit better next year, which I'm pretty excited. Um, maybe get a couple more planter boxes in here and like I said, try strawberries and maybe a couple other things in here too. But we got all winter to plan that. But it turned out really nice and worked well for us. Well, this is the barn and the outside chicken coop run that got built this year. And this is our gigantic Pekin duck, Lucky. How's it going, Lucky? Yeah, I know. Your friends are down at the pond if you want to go see them. Well, today the chickens are out free ranging wherever they want, so they're all hanging out, getting dirt baths. That looks enjoyable. This is the outside chicken uh, coop. We have several chicken coops in the barn. Uh, this one we can access from the outside. It's the first one that got built. There's our uh, rooster that we have, Foghorn Leghorn. How's it going there, buddy? And uh, I think we have, what, like 26 chickens? Uh, we have 27 adult ones and 17 baby ones. Okay. Anyways, this is the barn. Um, this is our bell here. If we want to get the chickens back, we've trained them. Uh, we just ring that bell and they'll all come run into the coop. Um, we got to get a new string put on there. It finally gave way after a few years. But yeah, this is the outside run. And uh, it works great for when we need to lock up the chickens and also helps keep, uh, keep the predators out. We also this year predator proof the outside of the coop. You can see there on, up against the wall. We, um, we put that uh, chicken wire that goes down a couple of feet all the way around uh, this side of the barn to hopefully keep uh, keep the mink out. Um, so this is our little run. What we do with this usually is when we incubate or buy chickens either way, or ducks for that matter. Um, when they get big enough where they can start to regulate their own temperature, then we put them in this little coop over here and we let them free run out in this little chicken area so they're away from the bigger ones until they're ready to in be incorporated into both. But this way it's a good way for them to get to know each other at a safe distance without anyone fighting or knocking over one of the little ones. What is it, nap time? is the inside of that outside chicken run area where the little ones get kept. And as of right now, we have our little chickens um, in a tote until they get old enough where we can have them out running about, which won't be too long. And then this is where our big chickens go. And this is how we gather the eggs. Shane built this nice little hatch so you don't have to crawl in there. You just open it up, get in there and get whatever eggs there are. We opened up this entire area this year so you could see the animals better um, and we also um, connected these two. We do have a little piece of wood that we can separate them if we get more ducks or something else later on that will 
put in there and keep them separated. But right now it's wide open because everyone gets along great. And this one is Pretzel. He's the sneaky one. But him and Daisy live up in here with Deuce. But Deuce is out on an adventure. So another thing we did this year was um, actually a couple weeks ago. We built a second coop, which is this coop, for them to be put in so we don't get them intermixed with our egg layers. And we matched this side to that side so you can come in and you can see everything. And just like the other side, Shane's got the little egg boxes here to get eggs. Um, and then you can open up in through here where they'll be running around and he built like a little ladder ramp for them to get up to their laying boxes. And that little square patch right through there is how they'll be out into the outdoor chicken run on the other side of the barn. So the chicken run that we were talking about, I still got to get the front door put on it and, uh, and that done, but it's pretty much ready to rock and roll for those birds. What our plan with uh, those baby chicks in there is they're going to grow up and uh, become basically our egg layers for our future meat bird flock. So there's the outside uh, door and right now this is kind of storage area with boat motor and all the windows for the new greenhouse that we're going to be building uh, shortly. So back here is where we did all of our planter boxes. Shane and Van put them together um, last spring. And we've made a few changes. Um, we rotated them so we can fit more in for next season because we'd like to do about double what we did this year. I did plant some onions and garlic over here and it looks kind of weird because I had planted them in and put my mulch on top for the season. And of course, since our chickens are free ranging now, they absolutely picked through it and destroyed it. So I had to replant it. So that's actually been planted twice, mulched twice. And then we came up with just putting the pallets on top right now to keep the chickens from rooting around in there. But what we would like to do with the rest of this, like I said, is we're gonna probably, Shane and Van this winter at some point, we'll build another um, eight planter boxes and we'll get them fitted in here and then we'll get it all refenced up and we'll get that new greenhouse put in right through here. So it should be really cute and super functional. And I'm thinking we'll grow probably almost double or three times what we did last year because we'll have the added planter boxes and we'll also have the added greenhouse. So I'm pretty excited for those big changes. That's uh, one of the reasons we actually did another homestead tour is everything that we've accomplished since our last one and all of the fun changes that you'll probably see in next year's um, tour. One thing that we have that's actually pretty cool is uh, our windmill cruising along there on this nice windy day. That actually, uh, that actually runs airlines out to the pond and runs an aerator out here. So you can see that thing marked by that decoy over there, just pumping right along. And uh, surprisingly enough, I mean, everything will freeze down here solid, you know, hard enough to be able to drive a truck out here later on this winter, but there'll probably be about a 10 or 12 foot circle around that uh, decoy there that'll stay wide open. And we're kind of thinking the ducks maybe will come down here and do some swimming during the days. Over here, we uh, got a couple more wood duck houses and I built myself a duck blind that I haven't used in a few years. I, it'd be nice to have some time to get back out and do some of that, but we'll see. I got uh, those pedestals over there. Those are for mallard houses. I'll be putting those out again soon. I had to do a little bit of cleanup on them. Well, thanks for coming along on the tour with us today. Beautiful fall day. Um, if you uh, enjoyed this video, um, you know, consider subscribing to the channel. Otherwise, I think, uh, you guys might want to watch the video that's coming up next. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Sit, Sadie, sit. Good dog.